Hey everybody, my name is Aaron Bach. I'm the host of Journals Out Loud, the show you're watching right now. Uh, today's episode, um, a little bit of a tricky subject, um, consent. Mm -hmm. So uh, just a heads up for all of you who uh, might be sensitive to that, but yeah, it's consent. And honestly, maybe not so tricky. Uh, with us tonight, Albania. Hello everybody. Diana. Hey guys. Gio. What's going on guys? And Josh. That was a good flow of names. <laughs> I, that was like, that, that just, that just jumped musically from one to the next. <laughs> now, on to the first question. I've recently got a new boyfriend. He's really nice, but I feel pressured to do things with him. It started off with just a kiss, but now he wants me to have sex with him, and I'm afraid to say no. Can you help? So, um, I think we all probably agree that, first of all, if you're feeling pressured, um, something not great is happening here. Yeah. She's right. Not, you can tell she's not ready. And you, you shouldn't be apologetic for that. Not at all. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess, why are you afraid to say no is my first question. Is it you're afraid of him if you say no, or are you afraid to say it because it feels wrong to say no? Um, I think that those are two very different situations, and neither of them are great. Um, I think she's scared of disappointing her boyfriend. Mm. So that's why she feels like she's under pressure, but... If you're not ready, you're not ready. Right. And if yep. that is ever a fear to disappoint someone that you're with, then maybe you just shouldn't be with yeah, them. Yeah, you at should all. rethink that person. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point because even if even if you're not afraid of this person, right, which hopefully you're not, hopefully it hasn't hopefully it's not that bad. But um even if that's not the case, if you are afraid of disappointing them when it comes to not wanting to have sex with them, that's a big, big, at the very least, discrepancy of expectation, right? At the very least, it's him wanting something out of a partner that you don't necessarily want out of a partner, which is unfair to both of you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that in that context, it's really only fair to be honest, right? You don't want to lie about what you want and need in your relationship. And he's made it clear what he wants. If there is that discrepancy, and there is, um, not disclosing that is... Uh, is just not a good not a good time for anyone involved um really i think probably anyone with a partner that respects them is going to respect their boundaries and their needs and even if they might want to have sex um they'll also be okay right with, with not not having yeah. sex exactly. exactly and you should never <laughs> underestimate like the importance of losing your virginity that's something so sacred like as a woman like that your body's your temple mm -hmm. and I, I mean, I would hate to be in a situation where I, you know, I lose my virginity because I'm pressured to. Right. It should be when you're ready, when you want to. And it should be like effort, you know, like something that's just going to be joyful, not under pressure. Like right. Just and takes I think the fun out of it. I, I've heard so many situations where um, girls lose their virginity and they regret it so much the next day. And I think um, for girls specifically, we hold like being a virgin to such a high standard. So when you you want to make sure it's right and there shouldn't be pressure or anything that comes along with that. And you're always going to remember that moment. Right. So just like know that like you, you're always going to remember that person, that moment. So you want to make sure that you remember that in a positive way and that you don't have to remember that in a regretful way. It's interesting because virginity is its own complex topic that I hope we get to talk about on another episode. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different paths that I'd like to, to go on here. But, but one thing is undoubtedly correct if you're feeling as though this isn't the right moment, if you're feeling as though you are under any kind of pressure, if you're feeling as though something isn't right, anything isn't right, um, then this isn't right, you're correct, and you should stop. This is not something that you should be doing, and you should feel okay admitting that. Um, everyone has their own pace, everyone has their own needs, and I think as, as we kind of touched on, a partner that is right for you, that is a decent person, will be totally fine and supportive of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess, really, two options. One is you move on from this person because they want something you don't want. Or, the other option is you do say what you need and what you want, and you work it out between each other. And uh, hopefully that works out. Um, and I think we kind of tackled that unless anyone has something yeah. to add. Just stand your ground. Totally right. And I think stand your ground, but not in the moment. Maybe I think it might be better to talk about the situation while you're not in the middle of doing something. Um, yeah, you no, know what I mean. Do you know no, what I'm no, saying? Th that's a great clarification because, like, not in the moment. In other words, before the moment comes. Right. 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 Because yes. in the moment, other things can be happening, and you might be swayed um, 
you might just be more confused than you already were before you were even in the situation. So I think with a clear mind yeah. is when you should, would make the best decision. Definitely. Having a conversation about this, being open and honest about wants and needs before it even gets to that point, mm -hmm. great plan. Absolutely and also super plan. common, a super common plan. Oh yeah, no, this isn't, that's not special, it's not unique. It's it's thankfully becoming more and more normal, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it, we're, we're finding in society that it's something that we can talk about as individuals, as couples. And it's helping, you know, I think that it's doing a lot of good. So hopefully that works for you. Uh, next question. Um, I think I might have been sexually assaulted. I was really drunk and about to pass out. And this guy I've been hanging out with all night started touching me inappropriately. I was too drunk to tell him to stop. Does it still count as assault if I never said no? If I enjoyed it, would it still be assault? What if I was leading him on? How was he supposed to know if I liked it or not if I didn't say anything? So I guess let's just start from the top and go through there's a lot of little points here that I think are all worth addressing um, first of all you think you might have been sexually assaulted um, I'm willing to guess that probably if you are ever in a position where you think you've been sexually assaulted something happened that wasn't great then probably it, it, it was sexual assault I mean if you're feeling this way that someone took advantage of you um, at the very least, it's something that you shouldn't leave on the table. So let's start there. You know, you shouldn't ignore the way you're feeling. I'll, I'll, I'll at least say that. Next point. I was really drunk and about to pass out, and this guy I've been hanging out with all night started touching me inappropriately. Um, quick survey. If someone is super drunk and about to pass out, do you touch them? No. 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 And no. I also don't think you should, I don't know if you're at a party or a club or wherever you are, but I don't think you should still be there. Um, hopefully you're with someone that can bring you home or you're someone that you trust um, that will sit with you. I think that's super important to not be alone in those situations either. Yeah, I think whenever possible, right? Like it's great to uh, be aware of your situation. Like being drunk isn't such a bad thing all the time if you're like safe and with friends and people that you trust. But like if you are all alone and you know that it's, you know. And you're with <laughs> a predator because that's what it sounds like. Well, you didn't necessarily know that at the time is the problem. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but either way, you're in a situation where you know um, you've gone a little too far, which happens. Uh, call an Uber before it gets there. But that's kind of besides the point because still, regardless of, of what you did and how drunk you are, if you're not ready to say yes or no or even hello um you're in no state to be able to give consent and therefore everything that's happening to you at the time is is not something that you signed on for it's not something that you consented to so yeah yeah especially I, if she was about to pass out which she did write that that's, absolutely i mean that's the biggest red flag if, if you're <clears throat> about to pass out there's like nobody should be touching you because that's already crossing the line where you're taking advantage of someone yeah, I definitely, like, agree, have a backup plan, like you, were, um, Deanna, was saying. And Uber and Lyft are great in some circumstances, but certain cities, they're not really an option. Like, where I'm from, I'm from Detroit, The an Uber there would cost probably, like, $20, something here would be $3. So it's, it's not always an option, especially if you're a younger age and on a budget, which I know I was on a budget. <laughs> um, so definitely, like, have a backup plan, though. And for speaking about the consent part, like there's no way that this was um, at all okay. Like yeah. um, the law is here in California, at least. I know other places are very similar. Anyone under intoxication can't give consent. Um, myself, I've been in a situation where both parties were intoxicated, including myself, and the law was only enforced under the female perspective. And so even though I felt like I was taken advantage of, uh, the police officer specifically said to me that uh, you're the man in the situation. You should know better, even though the f and then like actually I had pr ch charges pressed against me um, and I was held in jail and everything, even though like I was intoxicated as well. And if anything, it was the opposite way around. Like that was my first experience of like that was my virginity. And like she had slept with a bunch of other people. So it was very much like the opposite for me. And so. To this day, it's like something I have to live with, like knowing like I was intoxicated at, at an event. And so like just definitely be careful, like where you're drinking and who you're around and like no, have a backup plan. Like, Yeah. You know, uh, I, I think it's important to keep the perspective uh, the right way around, you know, like 
when you are in situations where you know that you're going to be partying hard, right, and like there's going to be alcohol or whatever, like having that backup plan is important no matter what it is, right? And that is a great step to take. Um, but never ever think that like the backup plan going wrong or not having one or whatever excuses whatever happens. Oh yeah, to you. no, yeah. that doesn't excuse exactly. what, like the other person doing anything either. I wasn't. Yeah, no, and I know yeah. you weren't. I just want to make sure everyone yeah, at home. Yeah, it's great to clarify. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. Um, but yeah, I love the idea of a backup plan. I do. Even um, like, oh, I'm sorry. Like even like having like a designated like I know when I like you know like go out to clubs or party having like a designated like group of friends that you all trust mm -hmm. and you guys all understand like. Oh, if I'm dancing over here with this person, like, and you see me, like, kind of give you, like, it's funny. We literally have, like, signs that we give each other when we're me, uncomfortable. Instead of me and my friends. When we're uncomfortable, like, we'll, like, and we'll help each other. Like, we'll, like, dance towards each other and, like, push each other out of the circle. <laughs> yeah. Like, we literally have, like, our ways of just, like, helping each other. Like, we never let anyone, like, get taken advantage of. We're just, like, something I'm really grateful for, like, these people that I met in college. So, just find people that you trust to go to parties with. They won't let, like, it's definitely something that's helpful to avoid situations like that. Yep. Which is messed up because it shouldn't be on you. It should be on people just being decent, moral right. people. But but it does it does help. Um, next point, uh, I was too drunk to tell him to stop. This goes into the last point a little bit. Doesn't if matter. you are not capable of saying yes, no, hello, whatever, that's that's not cool. That's you being taken advantage of, right? That's someone doing things to you beyond your consent. So, uh, yeah, that's horrible. Does it still count as assault if I never said no. Well, I think we've already answered that yeah, question. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to say no. <clears throat> yeah. I and mean, even if you say yes and take it back, like, during the act, they have to stop immediately. Yeah, no. It's not, like, Con there's no... Yeah. Con consent is not a free pass. It's not something that's set in stone. It's something that is flexible, that flows in the moment, you know? Um, like, you might think at the time, like, you're making out, oh, yeah, you know, this is working out for me. Let's Let's go forward. Ten minutes later, you realize it's not really working for you. That's fine i mean like it <laughs> i'm sure that people aren't going to be like thrilled about it in the moment i mean but that's still totally fine like and what worse comes to worse they never talk to you again it's probably someone you shouldn't be talking to anyways right and so. and another thing another important thing is like never worry about the disappointment because even if someone's disappointed they're not having sex right if they're someone who's a decent person who like cares about you and understands that you're like not someone to be taken advantage of which by the way should be everybody no one should be taken advantage of mm -hmm. um doesn't matter if they're disappointed they're still going to be like yeah all right i understand right, right. exactly mm -hmm. so uh if you never said no yeah that that doesn't matter you, you need to actually give consent it's not about the no it's about the yes if i enjoyed it would it still be assault so um here's the thing uh physical sensation and what your mind is thinking and what you want or don't want are um, often totally not related to each other. I mean, like, you might like something that, uh, here's a great example. You're being tickled, you're laughing, you're smiling, but you might hate being tickled. Those are involuntary reactions. Those are involuntary responses. And most people I know hate being tickled, but almost everyone I know if they're tickled will have the same reaction. Uh, I'm not equating being <laughs> that's, tickled. That's a good, but that's a way. It's a really good, good way, like, comparison. Yeah. yeah. Well, good. I actually <laughs> thank you, because uh, I was just gonna say, you know, I I wouldn't dare equate those two situations, but at the same time, it might be a, a an okay picture, right, to visualize. Well, okay, maybe it actually doesn't matter how I feel when things are done to me because it's still not what I wanted, right? So um, even if you enjoyed it, yeah, that that still would be assault. Um, what if I was leading him on? First of all, um, there's a difference between leading someone on and uh, having consensual sex. Like, there's a difference between flirting and taking off someone's pants and taking off your pants too. Um, there's a difference between, um, I'm okay with this, actually I'm not okay with this, and I'm just okay with this. Um, there is no situation where you can lead someone on and then not take it back and that's wrong. You can always still say, actually, I'm out. Um, and another question, if you were about to pass out, how is it possible to lead someone on then? You couldn't even say yes, no, whatever, right? Like we've been through this before. It's not that you were doing anything to encourage this man. It's that you were there and he was an asshole. 
so uh, that 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 sucks. But no, um, you or weren't she. leading him on, at it, or she. That's your. You know what? That's my bias. Good point. But no, it does well. Actually, in this case, it is him on. Him, but like just yeah, exactly, she, yeah, for sure. General advice. Yes, correct. <laughs> so that leads us to our last point. How is he supposed to know if I liked it or not if I didn't say anything? I think the fact that you didn't say anything probably goes a long way towards answering that question. Um, you didn't just say anything about whether or not you liked it. You didn't say anything about whether or not he could do it. You didn't say anything about anything. You were passing out. Um, when you need to be concerned about someone doing something better or worse or whatever for you, oh, I, I prefer it this way or that way, when you need to be concerned about that is when you're doing something you wanted to be doing, right? Uh, it doesn't matter if someone's assaulting you whether or not you liked it um, or if they were doing it the right way or, or, or whatever. If you didn't say anything, that's reason enough for him to stay away. And he didn't, and uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, but that's not on you. That's on someone taking advantage of you, which is horrible. Um, please don't blame yourself. That's, I think, what we're kind of getting at here because uh, it's not anything you did, and um, it really is just someone's actions affecting you. Mm -hmm. um, if this is something that's really bothering you, uh, which it sounds like it is because you're writing into us, and that's very understandable, um, I definitely recommend uh, speaking to a, ther a therapist for sure. Yeah, speak to a counselor, speak to a therapist, even speak to close friends. You know, I mean, if it's a party, hopefully maybe people saw what was going on. You can get some, some feedback on the situation and be like, here's kind of what happened to me, and I'm not feeling good about it, and I want to talk to you about it. I mean, that's what friends are for. That's also what counselors and family are for. Um, but definitely this is bothering you, and every reason it should. Um, don't keep it to yourself. Um, and... Uh, again, I'm very sorry to hear that this happened to you. Um, kind of weird to be plugging, but if you have a situation like this that you've experienced, if you have any questions about consent, if you have any feedback on this topic, we'd love to hear it. Uh, I mean, it's it's something that I don't think gets talked about enough, and it affects so m it, it affects everybody really. Um, and I think that uh, this is a great platform to be able to talk about it openly and, and freely, and. Uh, we want to hear from you, so please leave us a comment. Um, go talk to uh, Jenny at askjenny.tumba.com. Uh, hit us up on Twitter. We want to hear from you all about this, and uh, we're here to support you. We're here to, to back you up and give you help, and, and uh, we're on your side, so keep that in mind. And We wish you luck, and we love you. And um, all of you here on the panel, thanks so much for everything you've done. It's been a, a, a tough episode. It's been a long episode. Thanks for sticking around, and, and, and thanks for being... Uh, so so on top of this stuff. Catch you next time. Bye, guys.